Oh. Give me some pies. Give me some of the good pies. No screwing around. That's that's your finger, though. Is it? The road trip gone wrong. Buddy flick Tammy, starring starring Melissa McCarthy, drives away with just under 13 million. What is that? Who sent you here? Transformers Age of Extinction survives another week and takes in another 16.5 million for a total of 209 million. Who was that? A good man like you. Caesar love humans more than apes. Primate flick Dawn of the Planet of the Apes rises to number one at the box office, taking in 73 million in its first week out. And for a look at this weekend's new releases, I'm joined by Jason Gorber in Moncton, New Brunswick. He's the film critic with TwitchedFilm.com. Jason, welcome. Hi there. I'm in Shediak, but it's close enough. At least they have power. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jason, the reboot of, speaking of power, the reboot of Planet of the Apes mm. series continues. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. What do you think? Yes. I loved it. This is great. This is totally <laughs> up my alley. Um, look, we've had a kind of a great summer for these big action blockbusters. I'm the one who actually liked Transformers a lot. Nice to see it's doing so well. It's, go it's on record to be one of the biggest films of the year. Now, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a lot smarter and a lot more sophisticated than the Transformers film, despite the fact that I guess it's the seventh Apes film. Look, the original Planet of the Apes was a pretty heavy-handed but well-executed metaphor that, oh my God, I was wrong, it was Earth all along. What's nice about this sort of reboot that they've done, the post, the second reboot of the Apes series, is they've taken the core ideas of Apes, man, the dynamic, but how animalistic we are, about the, our conflicts, about the way war works, and done it in a sort of very sophisticated way that still has tremendous action and tremendous fun. Now, this one has its big... Uh, over-the-top element, which is once again Andy Serkis. You might know him as Gollum from Lord of the Rings, the guy that does the motion cap for Gollum. Here again, he's Caesar, and it is one of the most extraordinary combinations between a man performing and the computer graphics that brings this character to life. There's some stunning sequences in this film which just simply have never been seen before. An exquisite blend between computer graphics and actual uh, storytelling to actually make these apes seem not even real, but just the characters, the micro-expressions in our eyes. It, for that alone, as a cinema nerd, it's an amazing experience to see. I think the story gets a little bit off the rails by the end, but fundamentally, this is a very, very smart summer action blockbuster, definitely worth checking out. On a, on a uh, more serious note, Roger Ebert's yeah. memoir has been turned into a documentary. Tell us about life itself. So Steve James, the director who did Hoop Dreams, which was the extraordinary documentary that Siskel Niebuhr helped champion, did a film. I went to Sundance specifically to see this in another film. Um, but it is a truly wonderful documentary, which I highly encourage any lovers of cinema to actually go and mm -hmm. see. Steve James has told, it's what we call a hagiography. That's when you do a documentary that's just all glowy and stuff like that. This is not that movie. This shows the real Roger Ebert. Warts and all, his love of uh, so, a love of too much to drink and too many beautiful women. But nonetheless, he was an extraordinary writer. That when you do what I do, when you love movies and actually write and and, and critique them, he is absolutely an icon that we would follow. Not only because yes, most people know him as the thumbs up, thumbs down guy. But if you read his writing, it is some extraordinarily poetic things that said about cinema. And as I said when he passed, actually I was on um, CTV. I mentioned that even if I agree with him, maybe 40 percent of the time on a film. I would learn from him 100% of the time. And this documentary really feeds that. Steve James, along with uh, Roger's wife, Chaz, and a whole bunch of uh, people like Martin Scorsese, tell the story of Roger Ebert in an extremely beautiful way. It's a documentary, one of the best documentaries of the year. Do not be surprised if this is up for an Oscar and or wins the Oscar come Oscar time for best documentary. It is seriously that good. So double thumbs up. Absolutely double thumbs up. And as I said, it, the film does not go the safe route. It really does engage it and, and really brings it together in a way that people can actually learn a little bit more, not only about somebody like Roger Eater, but a way to love movies. It's, it's a real uh, testament to uh, filmmaking and documentary filmmaking, uh, top, of, top of the line film this year. Jason Gorber, film critic with TwitchFilm.com. Thank you. Follow Jason on Twitter at FilmFest underscore C-A.